to tell if your patient's having a STEMI involving the right ventricle? Whenever your patient has an inferior wall MI, you need to be on the lookout for clinical signs indicating that the right ventricle might be involved. Remember that the leads that correlate with an inferior wall MI are going to be leads 2, 3, and AVF. So that's where you're going to see your ST elevation. And the majority of patients, the inferior wall is going to be supplied by the right coronary artery. The RCA pretty much supplies the majority of the right side of the heart. So the right ventricle, the SA node, the AV node, as well as some of the posterior portion of the septum. As far as right ventricular involvement or failure, it's really going to be dependent on the clinical signs and symptoms that our patient has. Remember that if the right ventricle is infarcted or ischemic, it's not going to have very good ventricular ejection. So it's not going to be able to mobilize blood over to the left side of the heart and that's going to impact how the left side of the heart is going to supply the rest of the body. So what are we going to see? We're going to see hypotension. Now, normally in a hypoperfused state, what does our body like to do? It tries to compensate through tachycardia. However, we're talking about an inferior MI involving the RCA. So depending on where that occlusion is, we could actually have ischemia at the AV node. If we have AV node ischemia, that could lead to things such as bradyarrhythmias, AV blocks, and sometimes even tachyarrhythmias. So you may not see the compensatory tachycardia that you normally would see in the state of hypoperfusion or shock in patients with RV involvement. Now let's go back to the fact that the right ventricle is not squeezing as well, okay? So if it's not being able to mobilize blood over to the left side of the heart, what's gonna happen? That blood is gonna back up into the rest of the body. The thing about right ventricular involvement is that these patients can become pretty preload dependent, meaning that they're gonna need an optimized preload in order to recoil back and mobilize blood over to the left side of the heart and then through systemic circulation, meaning that we're not going to want to reduce preload, especially if the patient is hypotensive. And that may mean that we actually might need to give patients volume in order to stretch that, that ventricle a little bit more to work on that Frank Starling mechanism to then have that good recoil and mobilize blood over to the left side of the heart. As far as other ECG changes that may indicate that the patient has RV involvement, you may see an ST elevation and lead V1 in the precordial standard precordial leads. V1 is really the only lead that truly looks at the right ventricle in the standard setup. But if you wanna gain additional information, the gold standard would be to do a right-sided 12 lead ECG. And if the patient has ST elevation in the right-sided ECG, lead V4 is pretty specific as well as sensitive to right ventricular involvement. All right, y'all, happy studying, and I'll see you in the next video.